Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor. And today I'm so excited because we have Debbie Adams back. Debbie is one of our experts on our podcast team. She has her own podcast series. And if you go down to the link in the description later on, you'll see where she's located on, um, on our podcast. She has She's on The Advisor and she also has her very own podcast and she gives a lot of insightful information. Today, I'm very excited because she's going to tell us a little about her, herself, she, just so to give you a recap of who she is. And then she's going to go and talk a little about her books and and she's, she is the author of three books, and she's working on the launch of her last book. And she is uh, has a lot of, um, I guess, really good, insightful ideas and thoughts, and because her life actually inspired her to go down this road and become a best-selling author. And she's going to talk to you about how her life inspired her, how it gave her purpose, momentum and direction and how she ended up today where she is because she followed her lifelong dream and followed what her her what her inner self led her to to go so debbie why don't you tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do well thank you for having me on your show again <laughs> and my name is debbie adams and i am um I, i'm born and raised in um, middle tennessee and I'm a, I'm a country girl, and <laughs> I um, I grew up on a farm, and I loved all of my farm animals, and, um, you know, I still, every time I see a horse, I still, you know, have to look, you know, and remember the times when I used to ride horses as a child, but um, that is where my story began because my father was an avid book reader and he used to take me to the library um every Saturday my mom would take me most most of the time but um sometimes he would and um my I would read I think my reading stories back then was the Nancy Drew Nancy Drew mysteries yeah. I mean I just yeah I just really got into those and you know I I and even still now, I you know, the shows that come on TV, I love a good mystery show. But um, that is, I think that God was preparing my heart back then. Because I would read, I would go up into the barn loft, you know, to be by myself and with all the farm animals. And um, just me and God. And I didn't realize it at the time because I knew who God was. But. I just had a head knowledge of him. I didn't have a heart knowledge of him. Yeah. And um, so, you know, I would read my books and then I would write stories, you know, whatever story popped in my head, I would, I would have my little pieces of paper. I mean, nothing big and, you know, like, you know, stories nowadays. Yeah. And I would just write, you know, little small stories, you know, whatever, you know, popped in my head. And so, Fast forward to um, nowadays, um, I guess about four years ago, God impressed on my heart that I needed to share my testimony. And he told me that I needed to put my testimony on Amazon, which I did. I put it um, in an ebook form, and that was my first um ebook that I did by myself and I put it on Amazon and um I don't know if anybody had looked at it bought it or not because you know I I wasn't really at that point I wasn't really concerned you know about sales but it's called ring the bell and it talks about um my feelings and stuff as I was going through my cancer and so um you know I thought okay, you know, I've done what you want me to do, God. And it's like, I'm done. But, you know, God will say, no, you're not. Right. And so he told me, um, I see that was, I think that was like three years ago. And then right after COVID, he told me um, that I needed to write a book, a, you know, a real book, a paperback book. Yeah. And so you know, I have plenty of author friends and I buy their books. I read their books and I've got one friend that lives in Massachusetts and 
you know, she writes little short devotional books and I've gotten every one of her books that she's written. And um, then when, you know, I just kept pushing it off, you know, it's like, no, I can't do that. And then, you know, God kept coming back, you know, it's like, um, you haven't done what I told you to do. Yeah. And um, so I, I uh, told him, I said, well, I said, I will write a book, but you have to show me how to do it because right. I have no way, no idea on how to even get started. Yeah. And so I saw through that, that if you ask God to, to reveal something to you or help you to do something, no doubt he's going to show up. He's right. going to put it right there in front of your face. And it's like, this is what you need to do, or this is the direction you need to go. Yes. And so um, I had met this lady on Facebook. And that was um, right, right when COVID and all that was going on. Yeah. And she was doing, yeah, she was doing a political thing. And so, um, you know, I got it. One of my friends, you know, found her and said, oh, you need to listen to this lady on Facebook. Yeah. And so, you know, I started listening to her and then I found out she was also, also an author. But I didn't really connect it at that point that right. God had put us together. And so, um, uh, she, she had a book club on one of her books. And, um, so I went to the, it was an online book club. And so I did it for, I think she had it for like two weeks. And mm -hmm. so at the end of her book club, she said that she's going to have a retreat for everybody that was in her book club to come to California. Right. And so, you know, I'm like, Oh, okay. You know, that's nice. And so, you know, I wasn't even considering going. And then she sent me a message and she said, I hope you'll consider coming to my retreat. And so, you know, I was like, you know, I'm being nice. And so I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll think about it. But in the back of my head, I was like, I ain't going to California by myself. <laughs> <laughs> but God was I see now looking backwards because you know how how when things happen and you look in the rear of your mirror and you see how God worked things yeah. out. Mm -hmm. And so long story short, <laughs> I did go to California and Good for you. Yeah. And I that was my first airplane ride by myself. Because oh, wow. normally, you know, I'm going with my husband, you know, right. wherever we go on trip, I'm with my husband. So yeah, yeah. I have never had to tackle the airport by myself. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was interesting, but um, I mean, it it went good. God gave me the peace, you know, that I needed, and right. and you know, the ride was fine. And going through the San Diego airport, that was oh, that was interesting. That was, what, <laughs> that was a whole lot different than the Nashville airport, right? And a whole lot bigger, but you know, I made it, and so. She had the retreat for um, three days and she taught on the basics of how to write a book. Right. And now looking back on that, I know that was all God because yeah. how did she know to have her topic on writing a book, not knowing that God was talking to me, you know, yeah. speaking to me, telling me I needed to write a book. Right. And so, um, you know, that, that was a big challenge right there for me. I mean, not the challenge wasn't listening to God cause I was listening, but right. it's like, you know, any parent, you know, like you tell your child, you need to do something, you know, most of the time, you know, if they don't want to do it or if they, you know, they'll give you back talk or whatever but it but it wasn't that I didn't want to do it it's I didn't know how to do it that is yeah you know and so when I went to the retreat she said she gave a percentage and I think she I forget what the percentage was but it was a pretty high percentage yeah that um most people in their life um they want to write a book but um I think she said like 
fifteen percent of them will actually write a book. Yeah, and um, so you know that's that's what started started all of that. So I got all the information, came back home, and then I wrote my first book in two months. And during that time when I was writing. I was sick for like two weeks. And right. so I sort of got mad at myself for getting sick because, you know, I'm focusing on this book and, you know, and what I'm needing to write. And, but God was giving me all of the words yeah. to put in this book. Right. And so, um, you know, I got that and I self published that. And, you know, and, and I, and so I was like, okay, I'm done. And so, God comes back again. He's like, no, you're, he, you know, you know, our heavenly father, you know, he will, yeah. he wants, he has, he has plans for our lives that oh, we don't does, realize. For yeah. sure. It, yes. And so he says, you need to write another book, um, more about your life experiences and about, you know, how I worked in everything through your life. And that's where the, um, divine promises the book that's behind me that's how that one came to be and because I have so many life experiences from um, battling cancer to almost going through a tornado and watching God just move the tornado from the top of my house down the road wow and that's that still just gives me chills today when I think about it and that was like probably 20 years ago yeah. now. And, um, and so, you know, he told me he wanted me to write a book and, you know, let everyone that reads the book, see that whatever they're going through, just like the stuff that I went through, right. That he will be there. Yes. You know, as long as you, you, you know, you call out to God, uh, I mean, you don't even, you don't even have to call out to God. I mean, you know, he'll be there. Right. But, you know, it's better if you do call out to God and, um, <clears throat> you know, and he is faithful. He's been faithful to me in my entire life. And, you know, he'll be faithful to, you know, whoever. And so after that book was published, it uh, went bestseller in a day and a half. Wow. And that just that just blew my mind away. And um, but, you know. I, I praised, gave God the praise because, you know, it was all, it's all about him. It's written all about, you know, him and what he does and what he did through my life. And so now I am working on a third book and hopefully it's going to be um, launched by the end of February. But oh, excellent. Very yeah, with the, ho- you know, with the holidays, I kind of got, you know, distracted. Yeah. You know, you're, be- you're busy around Christmas and New Year's. So. Yeah, but um, it might not get launched till March, but I'm still um striving for the end of February, right? And so, um, it's going to be called Straighten Your Crown, Navigating Life's Challenges with Grace. And yes, and so it talks, I'm going to in that one, it's it's not as much, I put a little bit of my life experiences in it, yeah. But it's not going to be as much of my life experiences. Um, it's going to be more, you know, how we deal with life. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm mainly talking about the heart because, you know, straighten your crown. It's not the crown on your head. It's the crown in your heart. Right. And so, you know, it, it's like when you go through situations, you know, how is your attitude toward this situation or if it's in a relationship situation you know your attitude toward this person are you showing kindness are you showing grace you know and I talk about how God shows us grace yeah so so that's that's a long um shortened version of um you know how I started in in my three books that's an amazing uh, story. You know, sometimes I, I like, like you mentioned, I feel God has a journey for all of us, you know, mm-hmm. I, even before we step foot on, on this earth, before our, our mothers, you know, give birth to us. I think there is a journey. There's a plan for us. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's funny how things just fall into place sometimes. And even sometimes when we go through our hardships in life, 
it, it brings us to a new way uh, of thinking, a new way of looking at things, a new mm -hmm. journey, a new pathway. You know, I, I feel like, you know, the obstacles I went through in my life changed my life, but for the better, you know, those yes. times, just like you went through with cancer, I'm sure it was such a, an emotional and physical struggle for you. But towards the end, I'm sure now you look at life differently. You appreciate mm -hmm. things you probably didn't appreciate before. You probably see life in a whole different light. And you're mm -hmm. probably more grateful for things that you probably weren't grateful for back then. Because I learned from myself, appreciation and gratitude was two things that came into my life that, you know, more pow more powerful than ever. And especially positivity. I think, you know, positive. if you're not positive, you know, if you're positive, positive, positive things will happen to you. And mm -hmm. I think with every negative thing that happens in our life, you could always pull something positive of, out of that negative. So let's mm -hmm. say you go through a hardship. And let's say you're cancer, you went through cancer, but it probably in the end, you probably became more resilient. You became, you mm -hmm. know, and you started, you probably looked at things differently and you probably have more empathy for certain people that you probably didn't have empathy before. It probably, you know, it probably changed your whole life and, and changed the way you thought. But then in, in a sense, you now you're taking everything you learn and you're helping others. So, you know, that I think too could be like a purpose for you, you know, mm -hmm. it seems like it might've been a purpose for you. Do you feel like something like that might've been a pur purpose for you? Yes, I think so. Because when I got the cancer, um, you know, I was going to church, you know, my faith in God was strong and, you know, I was singing in the choir doing, you know, whatever I could do at church. And so, you know, at that point, I didn't understand why I got the cancer, but, you know, I was okay with it because I thought, you know, why not, right. you know, and because, you know, God doesn't give us anything that we can't handle. Yeah. And I've always believed that. And mm -hmm. so, um, and, you know, even when I was going through the cancer, you know, I would go to do my radiation treatments and I would have a smile on my face. And most people go, you know, in there, you know, they were just all, you know, Molly Grubbs, you're like, here we go again, you know. And, but, you know, like you said, going through something like that, it makes you look at life differently. And so now, every morning when I wake up, I thank God for another day. Yeah. Because, I mean, my cancer was, it was small compared to other members of my family that's had cancer. Mm -hmm. And one of, well, two of them actually, we've even lost to cancer. I mean, we didn't lose them. I know where they're at. They're in heaven. But, yeah. uh, and, you know, they're not here. Right. So and, sorry. Yes. And so um, that's something that I started doing after I got the cancer because, I learned that you have to be thankful and I'll talk a little bit, you know, about being thankful and stuff in my new book, but you have to be thankful for what God has given you. Not only yeah. the big stuff, you know, it's like, Oh yeah, I'm thankful for my, you know, um, big boat that I get to take to the lake, you know, every weekend. Right. You know, but you know, be thankful for the little things, you know, yeah. be thankful that you're alive. Be thankful. God gives you another day Yeah. because, you know, we're not promised tomorrow. So we exactly. don't know. Yeah. We do not know when our time on this earth is going to end. Only God knows that. Yes. And so that, I think that's why I started being, well, the cancer started it because it gave me a new outlook and yeah. Then, you know, I realized, you know, that God still has me here for a purpose. Exactly. And I didn't know back then that was 15 years ago, yeah. cancer free, 15 years, praise wow. God. <laughs> and, you know, I didn't think, I didn't know anything about it back then, but now I feel like, you know, God kept me on this earth because he has a purpose for me to do. And I yeah. feel like my purpose is writing these faith books and getting on podcasts, you know, like I'm like we're doing and 
talking about him and spreading the word to people that might not believe God, right. might not even know anything about God. Right. You know, and <clears throat> because without God, I don't see how people even survive on this earth with the way, you know, the economy and everything is going yeah. on now. Because, I mean, I would just be going out of my mind if I didn't have God, you know, to, yeah. you know, to talk to and for him to talk to me, you know, through his word. But yeah, I, that is, that really changed me. I mean, it changed me back then. And then even the past few years, I feel like I have a message and yeah. that's what God originally told me when he told me that I needed to put my testimony in an ebook on Amazon. Right. He, he originally told me that I have a testimony. I have a message for the world and I need to, you know, be telling, you know, my testimony yeah. to others. Yeah. I, I felt the same way when I went through all my obstacles in life, I felt like, you know, there was a purpose why I went through all this and, you know, it was, you know, I, I learned how to help myself and then I went out and I spread the word and, and showed others, you know, and, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's stories like yours that inspire people to move forward in life. And like you mentioned, which is a good point, people go through in life, you know, lots of different things. And then a lot of times when someone goes through something tragic, what is the first thing they say, please, God, help me, you know? Mm -hmm. And you, you know, they may not even be, you know, a faithful person, but when that tragedy comes, who do they look for? Who do mm -hmm. they ask for? You know, and, you know, my grandfather used to say all roads lead to one God, you know, they might be mm -hmm. a lot of different religions, but in the end, all roads lead to one God, because it, it the, the purpose, you know, and of, of being a Christian and have, and believe in, in God in, uh, you know, is to, to live, live a good, healthy life, to be good to others, to care, to love, to be kind. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it, it's, 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 it's kind of like a, a book of guidance. It's a, it's a book of how we should live life, how we should, and, you know, and having that universe, that higher power, God in our lives, and it gives us the strength and gives us the opportunity. And every time I've called out, like you said, he's answered, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so, you know, and you have to think, our world is run by energy and everything is so perfect on this earth. There's a reason for mm -hmm. everything. Trees bring oxygen, you know, like every, the, <laughs> everything we have on this earth, there's a purpose why we have everything. If the mm -hmm. world is too beautiful and too perfect, and I don't even believe in the word perfect, but when you think about how the world is created and how every little thing is mm -hmm. necessary, then you think, you know, it, it, there is a higher power. It has to be, mm -hmm. a God. there has to be, you know, and, you know, and I, you know, I think when people have faith, it brings, it, it, it gives you something to hold on to. It gives you strength. It gives you, you know, the faith, the courage, the wisdom, you know, and, and the hope to, to, to move forward in life, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, I believe, like you said, everything happens for a purpose and, you know, you, what you went through, you now turn that around, you know, and instead of like falling into a, a pity party, you mm -hmm. grew out of it and you now you're helping others, you know, regain mm -hmm. that faith and regain that strength in their life and be able to move forward in life, which is an amazing thing. And I, I think storytelling is the best thing is when people have share their stories and they can share it on what either verbally or in, uh, in a book, you know, or even write in an article, it could have such an impact on a person's life, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you feel like that too, probably. Yes. Mm hmm. Yeah, because, you know, I, when I was growing up, I was very shy. And I think that's why I loved reading a book, because you can get lost in a book and you can go, you know, to all kinds of, you know, countries and scenarios, yeah. whatever. You can get lost in a story in a book. And with me being an introvert, when I was growing up, you wouldn't think that now though. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I loved reading the books and, and, you know, that's the way, that's why, I think that's why I love writing. I mean, I still read books occasionally now, but I think that's why I love writing because I, I want to write something to help someone, 
And yeah. like you said, you know, my story or, you know, your story or whoever has a story, they can, you know, like write it in a book or tell it to a person and they don't know how that person might need that, might need that encouragement, might how that might inspire that person. Yeah. You know, and so, you know, that's, that's my purpose, you know, right there in writing the books is, um, you know, to help others and to guide them, help guide them to get them on their right path of life, whatever, you know, path that might. And when you start to, when you, when you suddenly got the, the inner urge to, to share your story with the world, did you start writing like journaling first, or did you just start right away? You got in front of that computer and you just started content, you know, really focusing on your inner thoughts and started to just type away. First, um, I started blogging Mm -hmm. and I wrote little short blogs of, you know, um, God would give me something every day and, you know, and I would, um, blog, I would do a blog and I would, um, post a link on my Facebook and the, on my website, mm-hmm. on my website, when you can, you know, I've got a, a, a banner across the top that when you connect with me, you know, I'm going to send you a small gift. And that's the gift that I send people is one of those blogs that I wrote. And right. you know, I think I've got maybe 15 of them, 15 to 20 of them. And I need to actually start back doing some of that too. Yeah. And, um, but, um, you know, they're little short things, you know, is, you know, I think, I um, think one of them was, you know, like the number 12. Why did God use the number 12, you know, like the 12 apostles right. and, and, you know, I just go through the number 12 and, and relate it to Bible verses, you know, right. and, um, I forget exactly what the number, I think the number 12 meant perfection. I think that's what it means. Okay. And, um, if, um, I think so, but I, it's been a while since I've written that one. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, um, you know, just little short blogs like that. And, you know, like if something is happening during the day and God spoke to me, like on one of my blogs, God was speaking to me on a song on the radio as I was going to church. And so I talked about that song. Yeah. And so, yeah, that, that's how I, that's how I started. And because, um, you know, I posted, um, an ebook first and, then I started doing the blogs and, um, and then, you know, that's when, after I started, did some of them, that's when, you know, God said, you know, you need to, you know, take another step, you know, and right. go actually write a book. And so, you know, it's, it's a, it's a process, mm-hmm. you know, I feel like God takes, takes our lives to a process. He, he, takes us through things and um because I've you know I've been through I've, you've heard I've been through a lot of life experiences yeah and I believe that he takes us through things that will grow us yeah as a person and mature mm-hmm. us yeah into, into where maybe down the road you might have to go through something else right but you're able to handle it at that point where maybe a year or so earlier, you might not have been able to handle it. Exactly. Exactly. And that's so true. It's so true. And and, and did you find that um, you kind of were getting like a lot of inner thoughts and, you know, it was like someone mm-hmm. was speaking to you and then you kind of just went, went with it. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I mean, any, when I was doing the blogs, I mean, he spoke to me a lot. I mean, it, it's just like no matter what I was doing, and even when I when I was writing my, I think it was my second book, either my first or my second book, I would be at work. I'd be, you know, concentrating on work, and then he would put a thought in my brain, and you know, it's like this needs to <laughs> this needs to be in your book. Yeah. And so, and then I would kind of stop like, where'd that thought come from? But, you know, I knew where it came from. But yeah. 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 
And so anytime that I have thoughts like that and I'm busy doing something, I will um, write it down on my um, note app on my phone. Right. And so then when I'm actually, you know, uh, writing on my book, I'll go back and read it. And, you know, and it's like, oh, you know, where can I, you know, put this in the book? And then it's like, oh, okay, this is where it needs to go. Right. So. And they say that as a writer, you should always keep like a little notebook either beside your bed or like a little pad maybe in your pocketbook Mm -hmm. because it, it, you know, people who, who tend to write and connect, you know, they, the thoughts come and they say, always write it down because a lot of times people will forget if they don't write it down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've got so many notes on that note app (laughs) and and I'll, I'll go back and, you know, read over what I, you know, wrote um, on there, you know, a couple of years ago. And I was like, oh, wow. (laughs) Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So yeah, yeah. That, that is a good idea. And, um, you know, because if I don't write it down, if something comes to, if God gives me something, I don't write it down. Right. I will forget it because, you know, you get distracted by this world, you know, phone calls, you know, whatever. And, um, because a lot of times, you know, if I don't, if I don't write it down and then I start writing on my book and I was like, what was that thought that I had? It, it needs to go in here somewhere. Yeah. And then I'll have to, you know, pray. And it's like, okay, dear Lord, give me that idea again. And, you know, of course, you know, he will give it to me again. Right. But it's, yeah, it's better if, you know, you can write it down. Do you, did you ever try meditation to, to, to help you relax and maybe uh, gain some new thoughts or did you ever just, or you, you just basically went right through prayer and just, you know, listening to what your inner self was telling you. Cause some people do different things to really start, to, you know, and some people even put music on and they'll put certain types of music on and all of a sudden it will relax them or make them think differently. And all of a sudden the thoughts will start to flow within that mm-hmm. I have basically I have to be in a quiet room like my husband you know he's always got to be watching tv <laughs> and, and so um normally you know he's in the back of the room and I'm in either in my office um because I work at home now so you know yeah. I, I have an office and um so it's either in my office or I will be in the living room in the recliner and, you know, it has to be quiet in another place that I can get good inspiration, um, which I, I started my third book when our church went on a retreat to Gatlinburg. Oh. And yeah. And so the place that we stayed at, it had a long front porch and, there was a time when I think a lot of the people were doing playing games or doing something. So I just um, took my laptop and went out and sat on, you know, the little long porch with the chairs and looked at the mountains and I didn't, you know, say a word. I was just looking just, you know, amazement as, you know, how God had created the mountains and I had my laptop open and then God just started giving me stuff. And so I just start, I just started typing. I didn't, you know, I didn't know what I was typing. I just started typing as God gave it to me. Right. And then when I came home and then I read over what I had typed and, you know, you're just amazed at, you know, what God will give you. And yeah the words that comes out of you from God. And so, you know, when I came home, you know, and I was just like, Oh my word. It's like, Oh, that's good. (laughs) (laughs) God gave me that, you know, that that's really good. Yeah. But yeah, that's where I get, that's where I get most, most of my meditation is, you know, just being quiet. Like, you know, the Bible says, you know, um, 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 be still, hear my still small voice, something like that. I forget yeah. exactly mm-hmm. how it goes. And, um, <clears throat> but yeah, something like that. And, and 
one of the, I was going to say too, on meditation, one of my friends that I did a podcast with before Christmas, she has her own show and she does a seven second meditation before she, uh, she'll start the show and then she'll do the meditation before she'll even talk to the guest. I like that. Yeah. And it's like, she'll close her eyes and then, you know, just meditate in for seven seconds. And then the whole time she is saying, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And, you know, when, when I was on there and she was doing that and I thought, now that's good Mm -hmm. because, you know, we should, like we were talking about before, we should always be thankful, you know, to God for, how he's blessed us, you know, what he has given us. Cause yeah. you know, we don't deserve a lot of what, you know, God uh, puts in our lives. Yeah. And I think, I think people don't realize that. I think people, mm-hmm. you know, we we're given so much, especially in the United States that we sometimes tend to, to lose gratitude, you know, and just mm-hmm. like you were mentioning earlier, sometimes it's not the materialistic things. Sometimes the littlest things in life, you don't realize how valuable they were until mm-hmm. they're taken away from you. And then when yes. they're taken away, then you realize, oh my gosh, you know, that it was mm-hmm. such a little thing, but it, now that I don't have it, it means it meant so much. You mm-hmm. know? And uh, that's why I say it's every day we should give gratitude, you know, and be grateful for something. And I have like a journal, I have like a positivity and gratitude journal. And every day I, I give gratitude to something, you know, I, I mm-hmm. have what I'm gracious for, you know, what I have gratitude in my life for. Cause sometimes even the people we love around us, we tend to take for gratitude, you know, we, we, mm-hmm. and we, we should, you know, we, we, uh, we don't realize how lucky we are, you know, and we should, and yes. that's why we should be gracious that we have them in our lives. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I like the seven second meditation before she does her show. I think, you know, people don't realize you don't have to be in a long meditation to relax yourself. You could be mm-hmm. sitting in your chair and there, just a couple of seconds. I, I taught in a class and I was showing people how you could just press your nose on one side, take a slow, deep breath in breathe it out in through the nose, out through the mouth, and then do it on the other side. Do that like three times. And then you cl- slowly open your eyes and take one deep breath and let it out. And you'll see mm-hmm. that a, a huge change in your level of calmness, you know, just from that mm-hmm. little, little exercise. And when you are calm and relaxed, I think that's when you get all the thoughts coming through your head is when you clear your mind, then the new thoughts shall come in, I think. What mm-hmm. do you think? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> with all of the distractions in this world, I mean, you know, we have the cell phone, we have social media, you know, there's texts going on, phone calls going, you know, emails, you know, yeah. and, and <clears throat> you know, my husband isn't, uh, you know, what, I don't know what the word Tech is. Tech savvy. Tech savvy. Yeah, that's the word. And, you know, because he's, he's a whole lot older than me. So he came from the old school. Yeah. Yeah. And when my phone goes off, you know, all the time, you know, it's like a text, an email sound or a notification from Facebook, you know, and he's like, who's calling you? It's like, nobody's calling me. You know, know, it's a phone notification. Mm. And, um, it took, um, I said, we've been married 11 years and I think he has had a, flip phone until about I think <laughs> two years ago and and he went from a flip phone to an iPhone but he has he has mastered it really well wow but and, and he even got on TikTok <laughs> I don't know how he signed up for TikTok by himself but he figured it figured it, <laughs> figured out. it out yes yes I'm not even I'm on TikTok, but I don't even pay, I don't even do nothing with TikTok. <laughs> um, and, you know, and I, I hear him, you know, watching videos on TikTok all the time. And I'm just like, oh, my word. Yeah, that's <laughs> funny. But, <laughs> but yes, we do. We do. We have all of, you know, all of those distractions. And um, if we can just, you know, be still and take a deep breath like we're talking about just to bring a calmness in our in our body and um you know that's the only way that you can really or for me the only way that I can really hear God speaking to me yes 
Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> I mean, that, I mean, he does speak to me, you know, in other situations, you know, like, right. you know, when my aunt died, um, you know, that uh, it's almost been a year. And I talk about that in my book. And, um, you know, it's, it's like in those stuff like that, you know, you're not really quiet in trying to hear God speak, but you do hear him and you, in that situation, in my situation for that, I felt him surrounding me, Yeah, you know, like a spiritual, I call it a spiritual hug because right. I could actually feel his presence Yes, because he knows when you are, you know, like mourning or you're, you know, sad because he has taken someone that you love, you know, to heaven. Right. And you know, but when you're really seeking to get an answer from him, that's when you need to have the peace and the quiet. Yeah. And, and he will, you know, he will give you, he will, you will literally hear him. Yeah. Know, tell you what you need to do, or in my case, you know, what I need, to, what words I need to write. Right. That's, so. that's excellent advice. I think, because I, I think a lot of people, you know, um, you know, they want to connect and they want to be able to, to write, you know, what they feel. And I, I think it's, it's really important for people just to know how to connect with themselves and just let it, you know, let it out. And, you know, cause everybody's capable of writing a book, you know, and, mm -hmm. and nowadays you could even do it on audio, you know, if you really mm -hmm. wanted to, you know. Yeah. And I've got my, um, I've got my um, current book. Um, it's on audio now too. Oh, great. Great. I don't, the last time that we talked, I don't think I had it on audio, but it is out there now. Excellent. Congratulations. I I Thank have you. my, my last two books I put on audio and that's where today's, you know, people are going more towards audio, you know, like mm -hmm. we have, you know, a new generation that their retention rate is, you know, like, um, you know, not as many people like to read as, as, uh, they used to, or their retention mm -hmm. rate, or people who are constantly on the go and they just want to listen to it. But, you know, um, audio is very popular nowadays and, uh, but people still like to read because, you know, my books still sell. So, you know, mm -hmm. our, we got avid readers, you know, yes. society. <laughs> so if you had to like take away from our conversation today and you had to give some suggestions about storytelling and putting together, you know, ha you know, you know, following your, your heart and, and, go and using your, your experience to do something good with it. Everything that we talked about, do you have some like takeaways, some, some inspirational things you could tell people who may, you know, you know, either want to write something or even they just want to follow their calling. Cause you know, it's all about following your calling, you know, what mm -hmm. your purpose is in life and, and getting in touch with that purpose and then just following it and be courageous enough to actually do it. Everybody has a dream. And um, I just happened to say that on Martin Luther King Day. <laughs> I have a dream. Uh, uh, yeah. but, but everybody does have a dream. And whatever is your heart's desire, whatever you love, whatever you're longing to do, whether it's write a book, maybe somebody wants to open their own business doing, yeah. you know, engraving or whatever, um, you know, just, just seek out God's wisdom first off and, you know, just ask him for guidance and he will open doors. And I found that, you know, he will open doors that no, that nobody else, no human can open. Yeah. And um, everybody has a story. It doesn't have to be, you know, that you had a cancer, that you had a death in the family, but everybody has some kind of story. And um, if, you know, if they're wanting to be, um, learn how to write a book, you know, just, just start with like I did, just start writing blogs, right? You know, that will help you to get your mindset where it needs to be yeah. to put your story out there. Right. And, you know, some people might say, oh, I don't have a story. I live, live a boring life. 
but everybody, everybody has a story and yes. whether, you know, whether it's, um, you know, you went to the shelter and, and found two lonely dogs and took them home and gave them a brand new home and they feel like they're in dog heaven now, you know, use that story. Yeah. You know, just, just find whatever your story is and whatever you are dreaming of becoming or doing just, I mean, just go for it. Yeah. I think that that's great. I think that th those are great, you know, words of, of wisdom, you know, advice, you know, because mm -hmm. I think everyone has a dream and you really, you just have to connect with your faith and you have to connect with your inner self and, and, you know, and follow it. And, you know, it, it's, I, I think everything you said today was amazing and very powerful too. Really powerful. Now, if people wanted to go to your website and they wanted to learn more about your books, where can they go? My website is Debbie Adams Books dot biz b i z and it has a um, link on there um for both of my books and then um, when my third book comes out it will also be on there and you can click the link and it will take you directly to amazon to uh, purchase the book and i right now on amazon my first one is i think it was 6.99 and then my divine promises, my second book, um, they've got it for I think eleven ninety nine, but mm -hmm. um, it's it's on sale for right now. Oh, that's and cool. anybody that doesn't like Amazon, it's my second book is on every online bookstore and even in um, Canada at Chapters. Excellent, excellent. My God, this has been great. I am, you know, thank you so much for coming back. And, you know, I'm really looking forward to, you know, building, you know, your web, po you know, your podcast series. Um, you know, just for everyone knows, Debbie is, has her own podcast with us and she has a bunch of different topics that she's going to be tackling in the next, you know, couple of months. And she's really excited and I'm very excited <laughs> too because she's gone through a lot in life. She's learned a lot and she has a lot to share. So, you know, you know, listen, you know, and keep track of uh, when Debbie's next podcast is going to be coming out because it's going to be soon. So keep your eye on it. And if you have any questions, leave a comment in the comment box and Debbie will answer any comments uh, that you have to share. Debbie, thank you so much for coming on. This has been amazing. I thank you so much. Uh, you're welcome. I enjoyed it. <laughs> I look forward to talking to you soon. Yes, same here. Have a great day. All right. Thank you.